Hey Kensington, I'm here with Janina. She is a nurse at McLaren Macomb Hospital. Um, she's here to share with us a little bit about how um, our current situation is uniting her colleagues. Um, but first, can you tell us a little bit about um, how your work arrangement has changed since COVID hit our community? Oh, it's changed big time. Um, it just started a lot with a lot of uncertainty. We just didn't know what was going to happen. The first week that we started getting the patients, it, everyone was full of anxiety and it was just a lot. So home life changed as far as going into work. I had to leave my kids home. I had to make the decision to leave them home for 12 hours alone by themselves so I could and, go work. And how old are they? Was you have a 12 and nine. Okay, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. So that was really, really tough, but I did it and they did fine. I had a few people checking up on them, but um, work life the first week was very, a lot of stress, a lot of anxiousness, and then it did get better um, yeah. week, the week after that. Week and you after. did change floors, right? You were on, your floor was Ooh. not COVID before this. Oh no. So typically we deal with mostly orthopedic patients, um, knees, hips, shoulders, backs, and then general surgery. So obviously all the, um, those surgeries have been canceled, so our floor was opened up. Um, so they, they uh, made sure they didn't send anyone to our floor. It was open, and then we started getting all the positive COVIDs and the pending, which at first took a long time for those. Right. Patients, you know. Yeah, so what's it like, I mean, caring directly for those patients? Is there a lot of anxiety and chaos? What, what is it like? Chaos? It's crazy. So yeah. our, I don't know if it's the same for every hospital, but our hospital, the nurses are doing everything. The nursing assistants aren't even going into rooms. That may change, but um, so it's one nurse to three patients, sometimes four. Um, and we have to gown up every single time um, we go into a room and sweat. I've had sweat. I've had sweat. It's just, it's up and the patients can't see our face. You know, they're scared. We're scared. We don't, know how to assess them correctly you know their breathing the main thing is their breathing and watching their breathing so yeah it's just it's changed 100 yeah. and these patients are alone right i mean they can't have anyone there with them so you're their only human interaction i mean physical human interaction that they get yes and that's that's something that i learned the I, i've worked twice since and the last time i said i need to be a little bit more um give them a little bit more light and maybe just say I'm praying for you because pretty much we're told go in do what we got to do and get out you know I mean, we're told yeah. not to stay in there long but you know that's something that I noticed I just got to say one or two more positive things to the patients they're sick they're just so weak and sick and not well right. so it's just something that um you know we're all learning right we're all learning yeah still. I can't I can't imagine what you guys yeah. are going through but you did talk about, you know, something's happening, stirring within your colleagues. You've had, mm -hmm. you know, this has united your, your colleagues and you've been able to bring up Jesus. Can you tell us a little bit? About oh yeah. That? So this is the most amazing thing about it all. Um, so we started a group text, which we've had here and there about certain things, but um, so these texts have been, you know, a lot of uncertainty at first and then a lot of prayers. We're praying for you. Um, at 12 o'clock every shift, we try and remember to pray. The, the people that aren't working pray for each other and then people are at work. So the one day I've been working on this floor since 2002 and we don't talk wow. about God a lot. We do, everyone knows I'm a Christian and I go to church right. and you know, I'll, I'll share some things, but we prayed for the very first time together in a circle. There was probably seven or eight of us and it was the most amazing. We cried, you oh. know, we, we laughed, we smiled. It, it was, it was awesome. So, um, you know, going forward, we tried to make that a point. I, I know the last time I worked, we forgot, but a few of us still did it. Um, cause it was busy, but that's what we're trying to do is just pray. And then constantly our thread of our texts are, we're praying for you. We're, we're sending Bible verses to each other, something that we've never, ever done before. So it's yeah, been amazing that's, that's in that amazing. way. Especially when you said it's it's chaotic and that yeah. if your colleagues are realizing that, you know, prayers are that important that we can take a second just to pray and have that time to unite. That's amazing. Right. Yeah. We have been hearing that people are more receptive right now. Um, mm -hmm. they're, they're in need of that hope. They're in need of that truth and encouragement. So that's, that's yes. really awesome. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, so we just thank you for what you're doing. I mean, being a frontliner, it's like you're going into battle every day. It's I can't imagine the pressure and the chaos. Um, so just know that at Kensington, we're, we're with you, we're praying for you and alongside you. Um, is there anything specifically as, as we're praying for the, the frontliners or anything, um, you know, that we can be praying for? You know, just um, you know, that we have, um, just that our days are smooth, you know, that's, that's the best thing for us and that our patients are safe, that, you know, and that we, we have the right supplies and it seems like we do now in the beginning, we didn't so much, but we're getting some more and more. So I guess the supplies and um, that our patients are safe, you know, that's who yeah. we're caring for. Yeah. That's, yeah. And I bet once, you know, a, a patient is healed and they go home, it makes it just joyous, right? I mean, yes. it's worth it. That's another story. So yeah. we had a 38 year old woman. She was a teacher. She was in the news, I believe. And okay. she um, was on our floor and she, we had to send her to the ICU because she, she had to be intubated. It was horrible. I wasn't there that day, but in the text, we're all like praying for her. Well, that last time I worked was last Thursday and she came to our floor. She was on our floor for three days and we were able to send her home. She was the yeah. first one to get off the vet. So we were just crying and um, my friend had her and was taking care of her. And she's like, she said something about being seven, seven hours being on the vet. And we're like, no, you were on there for three days. She didn't oh even realize. Goodness. Couldn't talk to her husband. So when um, the nurse wheeled her out to see her husband, they were both crying and mm -hmm. it's just... I mean, those are the stories that are getting us through every yeah. day. So it was amazing. <clears throat> yeah. yeah, that and the and the strength we can only get from Jesus, right? <laughs> oh my gosh, it's it. insane. It's yeah, it's huge. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thanks so much. I appreciate it, and we're praying for you. Yeah. Thank you so much.